It's September 19th, 2022, and this is the Watson Weekly, your essential e-commerce digest. Today on our show, Shopify changes its COO and CFO, and stock price is an important reason. Instagram scaling back on its e-commerce ambitions. Shopify introduces new cross-border features to accelerate its move into Europe and Asia. Amazon's Accelerate Conference takes Amazon in new directions. And finally, the Investor Minute, which contains five items this week from the world of venture capital, acquisitions, and IPOs. But first in our shopping cart full of news. Shopify made some major leadership shakeups last week and in doing so revealed its priorities. The biggest news is CFO Amy Shapiro is moving on and Jeff Hoffmeister is coming to Shopify. Jeff has spent his career at Morgan Stanley and led the IPO from the other side of the table. The CFO could have been someone who had been at a large enterprise or SaaS company their entire career. This is not just what happened. That selection would indicate a focus on SaaS fundamentals like average contract value, attrition, and growth. Jeff Hoffmeister has never worked at a software company as a financial operator. This tells me their focus is not necessarily on typical software company CFO tasks. It's more about managing Wall Street and having Shopify look like a company that Wall Street will keep investing in. In other words, what is the most important question on the new CFO's mind at the moment? What the hell is happening to the stock price? Of course, that's the same question that Shopify investors are asking who are buying the dip and are learning that it actually might be a falling knife instead, at least in this market. Shopify also made a change to COO promoting VP of Product Merchant Services, Kaj Nayatian. One way to think about the role of COO at a software company is it's the connection between revenue and delivery. Previously, Kaj was head of product management at Shopify, so he likely knows exactly what he's getting into here, and Toby trusts him with product roadmap decisions. It appears Kaz's scope may expand from just merchant services like payments and capital to subscription services as well. In a software company, a COO is kind of a hybrid role, and Kaz brings more product thinking to the function rather than previous COO Toby Shannon, who was on the revenue side of the equation. One role I keep waiting for Shopify to fill? Chief Supply Chain Officer. TikTok Shopify. Our second story, Instagram scaling back its e-commerce ambitions. In what should be a surprise to no one, there are reports from the information that Instagram is scaling back its e-commerce ambitions. E-commerce was always kind of a long shot proposition at Meta. Advertising companies pretty much never figure out e-commerce because e-commerce is about operations and operations are a much lower margin business than an advertising business. But even against that backdrop, The major things that have happened since Facebook announced e-commerce as a priority here are as follows. One, they changed their whole name to Meta in Mark Zuckerberg's quixotic quest to create a virtual fantasy world in order to escape from his current life, which is probably a virtual hell. Two, Apple beat Facebook up and took their lunch money with regards to their ability to track users. Since then, advertising's effectiveness has gone down there. Oh, did I mention that there's this company known as TikTok, which no other company on the planet seems to understand how to stop? In short, Meta seems to have much bigger fish to fry at the moment than e-commerce. This also probably should reduce everyone's focus on topics like live shopping as well. If a company with as much traffic as Meta can't figure out live shopping, then most other companies will not be able to figure it out either. Our third story. Shopify introduces new cross-border features to accelerate its move into Europe and Asia. Last week, Shopify announced two new offerings for its merchants. One is called Shopify Markets Pro and the other is Shopify Translate and Adapt. There are actually two big moves that I think haven't gotten enough coverage in the last week. Shopify Markets Pro is essentially allowing merchants to offer localized payments internationally using what's called a merchant of record model. A merchant of record is who the financial institution holds liable for the transaction and to get lower rates requires a local entity in a specific market to benefit from the best rates and lowest rates of decline. Another example of a merchant of record model from a payments provider outside of e-commerce platform space 
is the cross-border payments provider Reach. This type of cross-border merchant of record model was pioneered by past companies like Border Free and Global E, which is actually the technology that Shopify is using under the covers to power this buyer experience. The second announcement is something called Shopify Translate and Adapt. This technology allows automatic translations, likely powered by a third party, as well as the ability to manually edit those translations. This type of translation capability could be used to take the place of JavaScript overlay technologies, which have been prevalent in the cross-border space over the years, that can really slow down the page load times. It's hard for me to say if that's the case here, however, since I've not seen this technology live. Automatic translation is fine for a baseline, but it won't work for everyone, however. In particular, shoppers in France and Japan are critical markets where a nuanced localized translation is important. One of the things that gets lost in the narrative about Shopify is where their real priorities lie. If you look at it from a high level, in the direct-to-consumer segment, there is only so much new growth they can get from North America. Instead, their biggest opportunity for growth is actually in Europe and Asia. If you track Shopify's career page over the past two years, a big percentage of Shopify's hiring has been in Europe and Asia, mostly in sales and account management roles. Why does this matter for European and Asian brands? Well, for the average U.S. merchant, cross-border is not an enormous opportunity. It usually represents about 3-5% to of sales. In Europe, however, the game has shifted. Up to half of sales can be cross-border for the average merchant in the United Kingdom or Europe. This is something that Shopify has been paying a lot more attention to. And our last story. Amazon's Accelerate Conference takes Amazon in new directions. Last week, I traveled from New York to Seattle to be a part of Amazon's Accelerate event. Similar to the old days of e-commerce where it was important to be at eBay Live, it felt like we're at an inflection point in Amazon's history coming out of COVID with a new CEO, Andy Jassy, and a major initiative like Buy With Prime being announced. And, by the way, Amazon becoming a general third-party logistics company. Any one of these items on their own seems transformational, but the combination of these factors made it seem like almost essential to be here. Here are a few things I learned this week. Amazon's Buy With Prime is an invite-only mode, and this is Amazon's way to bring the prime promise of fast and free shipping to direct-to-consumer websites like Shopify, BigCommerce, and WooCommerce. Even just letting that sink in is hard to do for most people. The core of Amazon's logic is simple. 49% of buyers say that high shipping costs at checkout lead to abandonment. Amazon's Buy With Prime is built on the shoulder of its own giants, including Amazon's Multi-Channel Fulfillment, or MCF, and Amazon Pay. On top of this, Amazon has already released two additional offerings to pair with Buy With Prime. One is a marketing kit which allows merchants to explain Buy With Prime to its shoppers. The second is Buy With Prime sponsored ads. If you think it's a big deal to have Prime off Amazon, then sponsored ads will blow your mind even further. This is Amazon allowing you to pay to send traffic off Amazon on a cost-per-click basis. In order to access it, the brand will need to be a part of Amazon's brand registry. A few brands to check out that were up on stage include Bossy Cosmetics, Great Circle Machinery, Epic Water Filters, and The Cut Buddy. I would encourage you to check out both their Amazon brand storefronts, particularly Epic Water Filters, as well as their direct-to-consumer websites to see the treatment. Amazon released a few other items as well. Amazon Tailored Audiences, which allows Amazon sellers to use email to remarket to certain segments of their Amazon shoppers directly. While this is all well and good, I'm not sure why Amazon is reinventing the wheel here. If they want brands to adopt this, what they really need to do is release the data and APIs for this to be integrated into existing marketing tools like Klaviyo and Salesforce. Amazon Warehousing and Distribution, or AWD, also called All-Wheel Drive, by the way, was also announced here, which turns Amazon into a full third-party logistics provider. Just some statistics for you. Amazon now has over 20 million square feet of warehouse space internationally, 85 aircraft, and 200,000 employees in its supply chain organization. Amazon is also going further down in the supply chain by supporting curbside, and pick up in store with their local selling and today initiatives. Amazon talked again about its new seller wallet feature and introduced the idea of a marketplace product guidance, which sounded a little bit like a clone of something like Jungle Scout. To recap, 
This felt like a very different Amazon event than I expected. While I was sitting in the audience, if I closed my eyes and didn't pay attention to where I was, you would almost think you were at a Microsoft event. And instead of Steve Ballmer dancing and sweating on stage talking about developers, 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 you have Amazon here talking about the importance of brand building and owning the customer relationship. Huh? What kind of bizarre world had I stumbled into? This is such a huge shift from the past, and I think you are seeing a different focus from Amazon now. The big question? Will they be able to follow through and build trust with a naturally skeptical brand community? It's that time, friends, for our Investor Minute. We have five items on the menu today. First, Lily AI raises $15 million from Canon Ventures to improve product search and discovery. The company seems to be solving the problem that most people's browse, search, and filter experiences on their websites are dealing with extremely limited information. Lily attempts to expand the amount of attributes and relevance of the information available to shoppers so that you can find and buy products more easily. Second, Startup Deliver Rider raises a seed round to improve the consolidation of multi-item orders. The promise here is that sometimes for multi-item orders, items are not always in the same facility. This technology allows retailers to receive items just in time from multiple facilities in order to consolidate the last mile into one shipment. While this seems helpful, it's probably not as important as trying to get the inventory in the right place to begin with, right? Third, SMB and mid-market warehouse management system SKUVault has been acquired by inventory management software provider Linworks. Isn't it ironic that both Channel Advisor itself and SKUVault, who built their business on top of Channel Advisor merchants, were both acquired in the same week? Fourth, Instacart continues its acquisition spree by buying AI pricing and promotions platform Eversight. Normally, companies that are in an IPO quiet period, especially during confidential IPO filing, are, you know, quiet during this period. Instacart has already announced two acquisitions in the last few months. At some point, the company needs to settle down and actually implement these acquisitions to deliver any value, so I don't expect this trend to continue indefinitely. And finally, Kinderhook-backed ASAP acquires tools provider Romac Industrial Parts. This acquisition continues the trend of private equity being interested in accelerating industries like tools and auto parts through digital commerce. ASAP is a North American supplier of replacement agricultural and construction parts. Romac specializes in replacement ground engaging tools, or GET, including bucket teeth, blades, and rubber tracks utilized on excavators, graders, bulldozers, and other heavy construction equipment. That's all for this week. Till next time, Watsonians. Hi, I'm Rick Watson, CEO and founder of RMW Commerce Consulting and host of the Watson Weekly Podcast, your essential e-commerce digest. Our production partner for the series is Citizen Race Car. The show is produced by Alex Brower, production manager, Gabriela Montekin. To hear new episodes of the show every Monday morning, subscribe now at rmwcommerce.com slash Watson Weekly and wherever you get your podcasts.